I'd like to cover a topic that is very important in the problems that we as the Ukrainian Orthodox Church of Canada are experiencing, and that is the issue of canonicity. What is a canon, what is canonical, and what is the opposite, non-canonical. The moment uh, the average person encounters the uh, opponent is saying, that's not canonical, the average person tends to pause and uh, retreat. Because in our lives as Orthodox Christians, we've encountered the Bible hundreds of times. Every time we go to the liturgy on Sundays, the priest brings out the Bible. We venerate it, we kiss it, we hear readings from it, so we're quite familiar with the Bible. But what is the Book of Canons? And what are the canons? What is canonical? I'd like to say a few words. As a comparison to Canada, we in the Ukrainian Orthodox Church of Canada have bylaws. And what brings the bylaws to force is the fact that most people uh, will agree to them and will adhere to the bylaws. Now, how do you enforce bylaws that some people may not want to adhere to? Well, you have the power of the law. And that law is expressed or experienced through the corporate charter, which the UOCC has. And that corporate charter is enforced by the laws of the land, of Canada, Parliament. And Parliament is authorized or empowered originally by the British Parliament. And the British Parliament has been empowered by the British monarch, who derives his or her power through the grace of God. The same thing happened in Byzantium when the church was being created. Canons were created, the bylaws of the church, and they made part and parcel of the whole legal system of the Byzantine Empire, which was underpinned by the emperor, whose decrees were holy and sacred laws, whether it was a tax designed to regulate import duties at the ports of Constantinople, or whether it had something to do with the way the agricultural system was run, all of the emperor's laws were holy and sacred. And of course, it was not the patriarch, but it was the emperor that ruled in Christ's name on earth. Christ was the heavenly ruler, the emperor was the earthly ruler. So basically, a canon is nothing more than just a law. You can use the synonym of the term canon to be law. Now, of course, the Book of Canons, which is a fairly large tome, it is 1,000 pages, roughly, the way it was printed. It's very difficult to find in its original printed form, but online there are many sites where you can find the full text that has been digitized. And really, it is nothing but a collection of earthly laws that are designed to govern the lives of Christians, the laity, the clergy, the church, and designed to bring some regularity to the administration of all of this. But, I'd like to remind people, within the context of the Byzantine Empire, we, as the Ukrainian Orthodox Church of Canada, live within a different framework, that of Canadian jurisprudence. Let me give you some examples of the conflict between these two systems of law. 
The church canons deal with slavery. They deal with relations between Christians and non-Christians, like Jews, and with eunuchs. And there are a lot of laws that, by Canadian standards, would be considered to be outright misogynist, as they are designed to place women on a much lower social scale than their male counterparts. And if we truly, as a church, lived canonically, and that means that not only the church should be administered canonically, but the priests, the clergy, the bishops have to live canonically, and everybody else has to live canonically. Well, according to the canons, anybody who receives treatment from a Jewish practitioner of medicine has to be excommunicated. If we look at the reality of the 21st century, I'm sure that by now more than half, maybe three quarters, maybe even 80 or 90 percent of everybody that belongs to the Ukrainian Orthodox Church or any other Orthodox Church in the world would have to be excommunicated. It becomes almost nonsensical to insist that we are canonical 100%. One of the other points about the canons is that indeed, even in the modern world, if the church is creating its own regulations, bylaws, charters, they exist within the framework of a given country. The ecumenical patriarch is trying to create a new global orthodox church. Pan-orthodox, non-ethnic, global. It has divided, the patriarchy has divided the planet into various zones and Canada is part of a North and Central American zone, and there is an assembly of canonical Orthodox bishops. The headquarters are located in the United States, which means that if you're going to donate money to this organization, and they do ask for donations on their website, the question arises, can someone in Canada receive an income tax receipt? And I have written to the assembly asking them the question, and no. Canonically, or legally, they are not authorized, they are not empowered to provide someone in Canada with an income tax receipt. So this is where we have to begin to appreciate that canons are laws that are dependent on the given state in which they are founded. But, for the average person who is unaware, who is not familiar with these facts that canons are simply laws, bylaws, uh, articles of a constitution, articles of a given country's judicial system, when you say something is, oh, uncanonical, you have to ask yourself the question, is it uncanonical within the Byzantine system of law, or is it uncanonical within the Canadian system of law? In the Byzantine Empire, where legally only one church was permitted, so when you're talking about one bishop administering one geographic region, one city, it makes perfect sense, because you cannot have two mayors of a city, you cannot have two premiers of a province, you cannot have two prime ministers of a country. But Canada is different. Canada has a multicultural, multi-ethnic, multi-religious 
situation system. And as long as the Canadian government allows more than one church, more than one Orthodox church, more than one Orthodox church based on ethnic connections to various churches in the so-called mother countries. There is nothing in the canons that should be interpreted as being uncanonical. It was uncanonical in the Byzantine Empire. It is canonical according to Canadian law. I remember at the 2010 Sobor of the Ukrainian Orthodox Church of Canada in Winnipeg when Metropolitan Yuri stood up and explained to us that there is something wrong with the fact that we don't have exclusive rights in Canada and the fact that we cannot be an autocephalous Ukrainian Orthodox Church because we share this land with others and at the same time implying that somehow or other we don't control Canada. Canada is not our land. Well, whose land is it? Have we ceded our rights to the Patriarch of Constantinople? Were we authorized to do so? Have we, as a church, as a Soborno Pravna church, have we actually given our leaders the right to cede our rights to the Patriarch of Constantinople? These are very serious questions. I grew up, remember in 1967 when we started singing O Canada, our home and native land, and that's the only land that I know as a Canadian. Canada. It is my country, my home, my native land. And I share it with many others of different faiths, of different cultures, and there has never been a problem. But these are the kind of arguments that are being used to spread an agenda that is hostile to the very idea of an independent Ukrainian Orthodox Church in Canada. And so far I've only talked about Canada, I have not even touched upon the issue of the problems of the Ukrainian Orthodox Church in Ukraine. It is very difficult for someone who has accepted a priori beforehand the idea that canons are something holy, immutable, you're not supposed to touch it, it's only something that priests or rather bishops can understand, that is simply not the case. Canons are laws designed to govern the church within the framework of a country's judicial system, legal system, and in Canada, as long as the government allows these various Orthodox churches to exist, we are canonical according to Canadian law. We do not need to have a foreign entity decide whether we are canonical or not. Of course, there is the question of being in communion, whether we are recognized as following the principles of the Orthodox Church and whether we can be recognized by other churches. This unfortunately becomes a true political game and this recognition in the case of the Ukrainian Orthodox Church of Canada over the past 20 years has actually devolved into a question of administration. So you can add a different synonym to the word canon and basically say 
canonicity equals administrative subordination. If we are administratively subordinated to the ecumenical patriarch, in that case we are considered to be canonical in the sense that we are part of his administration. But that again, that conflicts with the charter of the church, it conflicts with the suborno pravni character of our church, and basically this is not, in my mind, just a concern for the faithful of the Ukrainian Orthodox Church of Canada. This becomes a matter of greater concern even to the Canadian government, because suddenly it's not just the Ukrainians, but the Assembly of Canonical Orthodox Bishops is planning to create this super church, this pan-Orthodox, non-ethnic church to cover the territories of Canada, the US, Mexico, Central America, and the faithful are going to be directly responsible to the dictates of the ecumenical patriarch who resides in Turkey. How these issues are going to affect Canadian policies, foreign policies, internal policies, should be of a concern not only to the faithful of the Church, but to all Canadians as well.